Does Eddie Hall smell as bad as he looks? Well, no, he actually smells worse, surprisingly enough. What was the moment when you realized that I want to become a strong man? I would say uh, that moment for me came after college when I was done playing basketball and I needed a competitive outlet. So I was really enjoying lifting weights at that time just to get stronger. And I thought to myself, well, what's better than competing in strongman, getting to be big and strong and actually uh, put it all on the line and compete. So. It was that moment when I decided I wanted to be a strongman. Has strongman ever helped you in day-to-day -day life? Example, lifting a car off of a grandma. Well, I haven't had to lift a car off of a grandma yet, but uh, I suppose it would come in handy to be able to do that. And I would say, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, of course, being functionally very strong is useful. I mean, I don't, I don't have problems lifting things or moving things, uh, I don't need to ask for help with stuff uh, like that, so it's pretty convenient actually. I, I enjoy it a lot. How much are your monthly food costs and do you get the food from sponsors or do you pay everything? So my monthly food costs are very, very high. Uh, it's you know pretty apparent from some of the shopping videos that we've done, the eating videos, cooking videos, that I go through a lot of meat and I really eat high quality meats, which tend to cost even more. So on a daily basis, I spend a lot of money. I don't know exactly how much, um, and I don't, I don't necessarily like to add it up uh, to, to exact figures because on a monthly basis, I'm pretty sure uh, the money that I spend would be pretty mind blowing, um, even to me. And uh, it's something that I, I don't wanna have to worry about too much, but, it is super expensive and obviously I realize that, uh, but in my mind, it's the cost of doing business because I need to be strong. I need to have high quality fuel uh, to fuel my body for training, uh, for performing. So it's just what I have to do. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll do a video where we actually break that down um, because I'm sure it'll be interesting uh, to a lot of the viewers. Did you actually get kicked out of PF? So by PF, we're talking Planet Fitness, and a lot of people are saying on that video it was clickbaited and whatever, but we actually did get kicked out, not for the lunk alarm going off, but for filming. And I think the woman was actually really, really scared because she literally told me that she was very, very scared to talk to me and that she was shaking and nervous. So I felt bad for her, but she was just trying to do her job. So yes, we did get kicked out because of filming, not for the lunk alarm, uh, sadly enough. I was kind of actually hoping we would set the lung, lunk alarm off, but apparently the lunk alarm doesn't go off when Brian Shaw goes to Planet Fitness. What do you think about Eddie Hall retirement? Your reaction? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really that surprised. I mean, I'm friends with Eddie, we've talked a lot. I knew this was what his plan was. He was very vocal about uh, what he wanted to do with, uh, you know, pulling the big deadlift and winning World's Strongest Man, and then find a way to get away from uh, competing in Strongman. So after he won World's Strongest Man, I knew that this was pretty much inevitable. He came back and did a couple uh, smaller contests, but you know, I, I knew that that his head wasn't in it, and he had achieved what he wanted to achieve. So. For me, my reaction is that I'm not that surprised because I knew it was already coming. What is the most embarrassing problem you face because of your size? I don't know if embarrassing is, is the right word, but I'll give, you, I'll give you one recent example. We just went on vacation and uh, the breakfast area only had chairs that had arms on them. And literally because I was so big, I couldn't sit down in the chair. So every single morning I had to wait for them to bring a different chair so that I could sit down to eat. Now, some people may find that embarrassing, but I was actually pretty proud that I was big enough to not fit in the chair and not because I was extremely overweight, but because I was big and strong. So there you go. All right, so for this one, we have uh, 
four different questions. Um, so I'm gonna try to bang them out for you here, man. Have you ever had your clothes tailor-made before? Yes, I have. On occasion, do you enter doorways normally or sideways? If I'm too wide to go through the door, I enter it sideways. Also, the uh, any metal scanner, I definitely have to go sideways because I can't fit through those, just off the top of my head. Do you still use that small Apple keyboard to this day? Yes, I do, unfortunately. Uh, do you ever get bothered by others to help them move big stuff around? Yes, I do, but um, I've realized that it's, it's easier to offer to help somebody pay for a mover than to physically do something myself. And the reason I say that is, if I get hurt, it's very expensive. So I can't um, afford essentially to be trying to move big stuff around or help somebody out, even though I'm a nice guy and I would love to help them, me hiring some movers helps them even more and keeps me from risking injury. So that's a good one for other big guys out there if uh, you get asked to help people move a lot. So thanks for the questions, brother. How long have you been working out slash training? Also, what age did you start? So I started training, um, I'd say working out, I guess, when I was uh, around 14. I, I kind of got into a weight room and went through like the introductory class and all that type of stuff. Uh, I would say that I seriously started working out when I was 16. Uh, where I was really, really dedicated and, and uh, started making some major changes uh, to my body and to my strength and, and all of that. Um, and basically since that point in time, I can honestly say that I haven't missed more than uh, like two training sessions uh, back to back consecutively. If I had planned training, I found a way somehow, somehow to get it in. So since I've been 17, I haven't... Uh, I haven't skipped training, I haven't taken like weeks off at a time or anything like that. So I've been pretty dedicated for, uh, um, I guess now, gosh, going on uh, two decades almost of, of solid training. So um, it's something that is very much part of my uh, schedule for sure. Have you been gymming at home your entire career or have you once used to go to the gym? Hopefully I read that right, man. Um, I have not uh, had my own gym my entire career. I uh, trained at a public gym up until uh, I turned pro and strongman, which was 2006. And then after that, I started, well, I guess before that even, I started buying equipment and I took it to that gym. Uh, they let me have a little space to keep some of my specialty bars and, and uh put some of my equipment actually in the gym, which is pretty cool of them at that time. And then from that point, I uh, moved over to where I had my own garage gym, essentially, and I've had now several different uh, locations over the years where I've moved stuff around, I've changed equipment, I've upgraded, I've done a lot of different things, but uh, um, at this point, uh, it would be impossible for me to go to a public gym, just because my training, I couldn't be as focused and you know, as much as I love talking to people and saying hi and that type of thing, it would very much take away from uh, my actual training routine and what I was trying to get done if I was focused, that type of thing. So um, I'm really, really happy uh, having my own training space and uh, I wouldn't do it any other way at this point. What is the best advice to help someone stay motivated after a serious sport injury? First of all, injuries are never fun, but Unfortunately, at times, they can be part of the game. And, and it's something, uh, you know, especially right after it happens, uh, mentally, there's a lot of different stages uh, that you have to go through. And once you, you know, kind of absorb and, and uh, think about what happened and, and the road ahead of you, the best way is just to take it on a day-to-day -day basis. So find something to be positive about each and every single day and work to get better. So instead of thinking about how long it's gonna be before you get back or how long it's gonna take or how hard the process is gonna be, just think daily, I'm gonna do something uh, to get better and also I'm gonna find something to be positive about because 
if you're positive about your situation and getting better, you will get better quicker.